Welcome to the Ideas Room. As the Prime Minister has said recently, the National Innovation and Science Agenda, or NISA for short, is a blueprint for transforming Australia into a leading innovation nation. Right up there with the likes of Israel, Singapore and the Republic of Korea. Australia is fortunate to have the key ingredients needed to turn this vision into a reality. Strong economic fundamentals and a stable investment climate, direct access to markets in Asia, the world's economic engine room, global reputation as a trusted source of goods and services, home to some of the highest quality scientific research organisations in the world. Innovation and science are absolutely critical for Australia to deliver new sources of growth, maintain high wage jobs and seize the next wave of economic prosperity. This is true for agriculture and our regional economies as well. They are and will remain a foundation of our national economy. As in all sectors of the economy, innovation and R&D play a vital role in increasing agricultural productivity and farmer profitability. The NISA builds on and expands key initiatives from the Industry Innovation and Competitiveness Agenda, or ICA, and the Boosting the Commercial Returns from Research Strategy. Under the ICA, the government already had key measures in place to foster innovation and growth, such as establishing industry growth centres, reforming employee share schemes to allow startups to attract world-leading staff, delivering the Entrepreneurs Program to help our entrepreneurs get off the ground, and promoting STEM, science, technology, engineering, maths, skills, and supporting the teaching of computer coding at school. The NISA builds on these and also includes initiatives in line with the boosting the commercial returns from research strategy, like streamlined university research block grants and providing for world-class national research infrastructure in Australia. And the NISA builds on Australia's unique rural research and development system, including the Rural R&D for Profit Program, Australia's 15 rural research and development corporations, and ongoing agricultural research undertaken by other government-funded agencies, including Cooperative Research Centres and the CSIRO, and our universities. But there is always more to be done, and so the National Innovation and Science Agenda was born. There are four key pillars to the agenda, which I'll explain first before detailing the new initiatives. One, culture and capital. Two, collaboration. Three, talent and skills. Four, Government as an exemplar. Together these pillars provide the framework for Australian innovation policy and comprise initiatives worth $1.1 billion over four years. The first pillar is culture and capital. The agenda begins with a cultural shift. It seeks to move the mindset in Australia. Australians need to embrace risk, learn from mistakes, be ambitious and experiment to find solutions. Australia needs to invest more in high-risk, early-stage firms. We need a cultural shift to celebrating excellence, backing good ideas and acting on our innovative instincts. To spark a cultural change, the National Innovation and Science Agenda will align our tax system and business laws with a culture of entrepreneurship and innovation and provide more resources to promote innovation and commercialisation of good ideas. There are new tax breaks for early-stage investors in innovative startups, new tax offsets for venture capital funds, and an increased cap on funds under management. The new tax incentive for early-stage investors will encourage more investment in startups through a 20% income tax offset on investments, capped at $200,000 per investor per year, and a 10-year exemption on capital gains tax provided investments are held for at least three years. Amendments to the Early Stage slash Venture Capital Limited Partnership, VCLP slash ESVCLP regime, will encourage more investment in startups. Partners in a new ESVCLP will receive 10% non-refundable tax offset on capital invested during the year. The maximum fund size for new ESVCLPs will be increased from $100 million to $200 million. ESVCLPs will no longer be required to divest from a company when the company's value exceeds $250 million, and eligibility and investment requirements will be relaxed to allow a broader range of investment activity and diversity of investors. And there will be two new co-investment funds so the government can partner with the private sector to back early-stage ventures a $200 million CSIRO innovation fund and a $250 million biomedical translation fund. 
The CSIRO Innovation Fund will boost the commercialization research through two components, an early stage innovation fund of up to $200 million to support new spin-out companies from Australian research institutions and a $20 million expansion to CSIRO's accelerator program to include other publicly funded research organisations. Australia is a world leader in health and medical research. The new $250 million Biomedical Translation Fund will match private sector investments to help the translation and commercialization of promising medical research discoveries. Last but not least, startups have the access to resources, knowledge and networks they need to become globally competitive businesses. The $8 million Incubator Support Program will help grow the next generation of innovative businesses by offering matched funding to support development of new incubators in regional or sectoral areas with high innovation potential, boost the effectiveness of incubators including support to expand their services and act as a commercialization advisor and provide access to top quality research and technical talent through 3 to 12 month secondments of national or international experts. Startups will be able to more easily bring in equity partners and strict insolvency rules are being relaxed to remove the sanctions and stigma from entrepreneurs who have a go. We will reduce the stigma of business failure through reforms to our bankruptcy provisions by reducing penalties in line with recent recommendations made by the Productivity Commission. Increased access to company losses will support innovative businesses to grow and become more profitable without losing access to losses generated during the startup phase. Intangible asset depreciation will give taxpayers the option to self-assess the taxable effective life of such assets, thereby aligning their tax treatment with that of other assets and providing more flexibility to startups. We are also building on reforms to employee share schemes implemented earlier this year through changing the disclosure requirements so startups do not have to disclose commercially sensitive information and to reduce the cost of using an ESS. The second pillar is collaboration. Australia has the lowest level of collaboration between researchers and industry in the OECD. We rank highly for research excellence, but have a poor record of translating our publicly funded research into commercial outcomes. Businesses that collaborate with research organisations are three times more likely to experience productivity growth and improve sales and export activity. So this pillar is as much about our businesses being viable in the global economy as it is about ensuring great research is not left on the desk. The government is committed to providing the incentives for greater industry research collaboration. The new $18 million innovation connections will expand and refocus the existing research connections element of the Entrepreneurs Program too. Provide additional facilitators so that more businesses can access Australia's innovation infrastructure, particularly in regional Australia. Make matched grants available to support graduate and postgraduate researchers being placed in businesses. Make matched grants available to support business researchers to be placed in a publicly funded research organisation. And identify opportunities to access R&D and testing facilities and develop specialised training options with the Industry Skills Fund. Funding incentives are being reformed so that more university funding is directed to research that is done in partnership with industry. We will also undertake the first systematic national assessment to measure the economic, social, environmental and other benefits of university research. The assessment will report on impact and engagement at a university level by discipline. And the Australian Research Council's ARC Linkage Projects Scheme will be open to continuous applications and decision making will be fast tracked. Changes to the research block grants will improve collaboration between universities and industry by sharpening funding incentives and streamlining and simplifying funding arrangements. If we aspire to be the best in the world, we need to look at what the high flyers are doing right now. The government will invest $36 million over five years through a global innovation strategy to improve Australia's international innovation and science collaboration including $11 million to establish five landing pads for Australia's entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, Tel Aviv and three other locations, providing $22 million seed funding to help Australian businesses and researchers collaborate with international counterparts on industry research and investing $3 million in reducing barriers to regional collaboration and promoting open market industry research collaboration. There will be long-term funding certainty for world-leading national research infrastructure. The government will invest $2.3 billion over the next 10 years, including 
$1.5 billion for the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy, and Chris, $520 million for the Australian Synchrotron, and $294 million for Australia's commitment to the International Square Kilometre Array SKA project. And we are investing in the future of innovation technology by boosting Australia's world-class capability in quantum computing and establishing a new cybersecurity growth centre. We are investing $26 million over five years to support the development of silicon quantum computing technology in Australia. And the industry-led $30 million cybersecurity growth centre will grow and strengthen the cybersecurity industry by bringing together industry, researchers and government to create a cybersecurity innovation network. The third pillar is talent and skills. The Prime Minister has said Australia's best resources are walking above the ground, not buried below it. It is fair to say people are an essential component to an ideas boom. People are the engine room of Australia's innovative capacity. We want to ensure Australians have the skills needed for high-wage, high-productivity jobs. So we will build a talent and skills pool. We are equipping young Australians to create and use digital technologies. To help Australians prepare for the jobs of the future, the government is investing over $50 million in Year 5s and 7s to learn coding through online computing challenges, supporting and upskilling our teachers to implement the digital technologies curriculum through online learning activities and expert help, and targeted ICT and STEM programs like ICT Summer Schools for Years 9 and 10, and STEM partnerships to bring scientists and ICT professionals into classrooms. We are expanding opportunities for women in STEM and entrepreneurship. The government is investing over $13 million to support the greater participation of girls and women in the research sector, STEM industries, startups and entrepreneurial firms. The government will celebrate female STEM role models and build programs and networks that support workplace gender equality, such as the Athena Swan program, to realise our full potential as a nation through greater contribution from women. We are improving visa arrangements to bring entrepreneurs and other innovative talent to Australia. We are introducing a new entrepreneur's visa for up-and-coming entrepreneurial talent and enhancing pathways to permanent residency for high-quality STEM and ICT postgraduate students. We are inspiring STEM literacy right from the beginning and throughout schooling and beyond in the general community with $48 million going towards encouraging school students to participate and achieve in science and maths by supporting participation in international competitions and by introducing youth prizes in the prestigious Prime Minister's Prizes for Science, engaging preschoolers with fun experiments, inquiry and play-based learning apps focused on STEM concepts and backing science in our communities with events such as National Science Week that inspire STEM curiosity and knowledge in young people. The fourth and final pillar is government as an exemplar. It has often been easier for government to continue with the way things have been done rather than embrace new technological opportunities. We want to make sure our significant investment in science, research and innovation, $9.7 billion in 2014 to 15, is spent in a coordinated way with maximum benefit to all Australians. So we are looking to change how government does things to deliver better services for less taxpayers' money. We are placing innovation and science at the heart of policy making and getting the governance and oversight right. There will be a single body responsible for researching, planning and advising government on the long-term strategic vision for innovation and science. A new independent statutory board, Innovation and Science Australia, will be accountable to a new Innovation and Science Committee of Cabinet and chaired by the Prime Minister. The board will take a coordinated view of policies that affect innovation to ensure that the government implement this agenda so that Australia builds a stronger, more entrepreneurial economy. We'll encourage innovation through government procurement. The government will leverage technology to improve services through the Digital Transformation Office, making government more accessible to startups and innovative small and medium businesses by breaking down barriers to technology procurement. These businesses will find it easier to compete for the $5 billion that the government spends a year on ICT through a new digital marketplace to be built by the Digital Transformation Office. ICT products and services will be standardised and broken into component parts to reduce barriers to participation. The government will also pilot a new approach to government procurement through the Business Research and Innovation Initiative. The government will challenge small to medium enterprises to deliver innovative solutions for government rather than tendering for an existing product. 
Finally, we are making sure the government is part of the data revolution. The government will remove existing barriers between the many different data holdings across government to ensure we promote innovation and make the best use of the vast quantity of public data currently held. Non-sensitive data will be made openly available by default in machine-readable and anonymized forms through data.gov.au so that the private sector can use it and reuse it to create new and innovative products and business models. The government will ensure that Australia builds and maintains world-leading data science research capability through Data61, part of CSIRO. With cutting-edge research in data analytics and cybersecurity, Data61 can help develop new technology-based industries and transform existing ones. Data61 will work with universities to expand its PhD program, where students work directly with industry to solve problems and develop new products, processes and services. Many initiatives won't commence immediately, although some, like the Research Collaboration Program Innovation Connections, are already in action. The department, as well as our partners across government, including the Australian Tax Office, will be doing further consultation on the detail of many of these initiatives from February 2016. For inquiries, contact nisa at industry.gov.au or call 13 28 46.